Donald Trump, as far as we can tell, has just been trying to win a third championship at his own golf course. My question to you, sir, can voters trust a presidential candidate who has not won a single Trump International Golf Club trophy? At long last, sir, have you no chip shot? Well, look, I'd be happy to play. I told him this before when he came into the Oval, when he was being, before he got sworn in. I said, I'll give you three strokes if you carry your own bag. <laughs> it's Ken Harbaugh with the Against All Enemies on the Midas Touch Network. You may have heard that Joe Biden just had a record-breaking fundraiser, emceed by Stephen Colbert, that brought in $26 million for his presidential campaign. Now, I'll be the first to say that money in politics is a problem, especially when we don't know where it's coming from. But I have some perspective on the role of money in campaigns and what a fundraising haul like this can tell us. I ran for Congress once in Ohio unsuccessfully, and a huge part of the job was raising money. It's just the reality of politics today. And unless a candidate is independently wealthy, you have to raise the money to get your message out. I'm not going to spend the next 10 minutes lamenting the corrosive effects of money in politics. I do that enough already. What I will do is try to explain what a fundraising night like Joe Biden just had means. First of all, here's how Fox News reacted. And you know, if they're this mad, then the Biden campaign is probably doing something right. This was just, it was obscene. It was disgusting. It was uh, certainly a, a lack of empathy. A, a, and it's almost as though empathy has been excised from them in some kind of a surgery. And they're all there, you know, <laughs> laughing it up, having a great time with their big celebrity pals, making lots of money. Part of the reason that the Magaverse is so furious at the success of this fundraiser is that the Trump campaign just can't match it. Even though money is all the former president seems to think about, he's being seriously outraised. And he's got other bills to pay, like the massive legal judgments he now has to deal with because he's a criminal. We all saw him hawking $60 Trump-endorsed Bibles over the Easter holiday. He's desperate for cash. And anyone who still defends Trump as a beacon of honesty and respectability deserves to be mocked. Here's that same Fox commentator. We've always seen honesty with President Trump. One thing about that guy is that you know who he is. He is always going to be himself. He never adjusts the nature of what he's going to say or do to trick people or to pander. In Trump world, there appears to be a kind of panic setting in about the growing momentum of Biden's campaign. And a one-night $26 million fundraising haul tells us something. We know that political donors give for a variety of reasons, but a few themes are starting to emerge. Democratic donors are finally waking up to the threat that Donald Trump poses. We've been sounding the alarm for years here on the Midas Touch Network. We produced a documentary about that threat against all enemies that just hit number one on the Apple TV charts. But most people, even most political donors, haven't taken the threat of a second Trump term seriously enough. That is beginning to change. We're also seeing signals of a political coalescing. That fundraiser featured three presidents on stage together. What's striking to me about that is less that Barack Obama and Bill Clinton joined President Biden for a campaign event, but that you will never see the equivalent with Trump. The people who know him best, people who served with him in his first administration, They've said he's a danger to the country. His own chief of staff, his own secretary of defense have said they don't support him. Donald Trump does not build coalitions. But Joe Biden does. That setting with three presidents on stage together may never happen again. And it is an important indicator of just how serious this moment is. President Biden laid it out. We are in 2024, and this election really feels like the most important election of our lives. When it comes to rights and freedoms and the heart and the soul and the future of our country, first question for you, President Biden, how would you describe what's at stake in this election? I think our democracy is at stake. Not a joke. I think democracy is literally at stake. Look, I wasn't going to run in 2020 because I just lost my son, Bo, a little earlier. And uh, until I watched what happened down in, in Virginia when those folks came out of the fields carrying torches and, 
and uh, Nazi flags and accompanied by white supremacists. And a young woman was killed, a bystander. And when the president was asked, former president was asked what he thought of that, he said, they're very fine people on both sides. We're at a real inflection point in history. Things are changing. This guy denies there's a global warming. This guy wants to get rid of not only Roe v. Wade, but he, which he's he brags about having done. He wants to get rid of the ability of anyone anywhere in America to ever to choose. I mean, all the things he's doing are so old. Speaking of old. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a little old and out of shape. But anyway. It's often said that yard signs don't vote and that money isn't a guarantee of success in politics. But here's what a $26 million night means for Biden's campaign. It's not just a sign that donors are waking up to the threat of a second Trump presidency. It's also a sign of enthusiasm. By all accounts, and I spoke to people who were at the event, it was a motivating night. Democrats led by Joe Biden are on the march. Perhaps most importantly, this money will be put to use. It will help get the word out about what the Biden administration has done for the country. Jessica Tarloff explains. The substance of it, though, when you bring in $26 million in a night or $10 million out of the State of the Union, you can do things like open up 10 field offices in North Carolina. It's the first time the Democrats will have a field office in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We have three dozen offices in Wisconsin. That's how you win elections with ground game. And that's what Donald Trump is hoping to do as well with his well legal fees and then field offices. I love that Jessica Tarlov slipped in the comment about Donald Trump's legal fees. That's not just a punchline. It's worth noting that a significant fraction of the money being raised by Trump, even the money being raised by the RNC, which is now co-chaired by Trump's daughter-in-law, a significant chunk of that is going to pay Trump's legal bills. Not because he's being persecuted, but because he's a criminal. I wish money wasn't a factor in politics and that the Biden campaign didn't have to hold fundraisers. But as I tell my kids, life isn't a wish-making factory, and the fact that Joe Biden is crushing Donald Trump's fundraising numbers is a good thing. At the end of the day, though, it's going to be up to us, the voters. So Midas Mighty, let's keep up this momentum. And if you haven't seen the Against All Enemies documentary yet, check it out on Apple TV and tell a friend. Thanks. It's Ken Harbaugh with the Midas Touch Network. The film Against All Enemies, which I co-produced with Ben Mycellus and this network, has won awards around the world for its up-close portrayal of America's insurrectionist movement. It premieres in the U.S. on March 29th on Amazon and Apple TV. Go to AgainstAllEnemiesFilm.com or click the link below. But don't just watch Against All Enemies. Tell your friends about it. It's one more way to hold accountable those who threaten our democracy. Thanks, Midas Mighty. Let's use our power well. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.